talk about the bid for U.S. steel by Japan's Nippon Steel. President Biden uh, called it vital, in his words, for U.S. steel to remain domestically owned and operated. Last week, the head of the United Steelworkers wel Union welcomed that message. Uh, meanwhile, in a statement to CNBC, U.S. Steel said it also uh, has the backs of American steelworkers and that, uh, in their words, it has been made clear that there will be no job losses, no plant closures, and no transfer of production uh, resulting from this transaction. Joining us now, David McCall, United Steelworkers uh, Union International President. And it's hard to, David, it's good to see you. Thanks, thanks for joining us. It's hard to, to, to separate all the different uh, concerns here. And I'm wondering if uh, is it should we be worried with all the onshoring and all all the concern about keeping things in the United States strategic industries usually you know worrying about China is it important that U.S. steel remains independent or is it important that Nippon were, were to honor all of the existing labor contracts what are we really talking about here well it's really a combination of both I mean First of all, you know, we recognize, as everybody does, Japan's an ally, but that doesn't necessarily make them an economic ally. Uh, for years, we've had issues over trade cases where they've dumped product into the U.S., either, either selling it below market prices uh, or it being subsidized. Uh, Japan has an overcapacity of uh, steelmaking uh, in, in their country, and along with their JVs in China, it's a real issue about are we going to continue to melt and pour steel in the United States? And that's a national defense issue, critical infrastructure, and supply chain issues. And for our members, it's making sure that it is a domestic uh, owner uh, that continues to be able to you know, backstop our not only our labor agreements, but our pension plans, our retiree health care plans, and to make sure that we have capital uh, continuing to go into this industry. On the announcement of the transition, uh, Mr. Mori from, from Nippon said that they were on a, a direct plan with U.S. Steel over about the future of our facilities. And U.S. Steel has been shutting down uh, steel making capacity in this country over the last several years uh, in terms of blast furnace production, which you need for national defense and critical infrastructure. It can't be made uh, in electric arc furnaces uh, in the same manner in the same way. So it is an issue. And, and they make a statement. What makes it so uh, insincere is they make a statement, there'll be no layoffs, there'll be no plant closures. But in our discussions with them, they say there'll be no plant closures, there'll be no layoffs unless there's a business plan change. Well, that's, that's not worth the water that it's uh, held in. So their, their rhetoric on one side of the uh, issue has a lot more to do with the short-term gain with uh, with their stock price and, and with uh, institutional investors in terms of their short-term gain, not the long-term security of this country. So you don't want this deal no matter what to go through, or, or is there a way to structure it or with, with the right type of guarantees? Would it make sense? I, I mean, we do live in a global world, and, you know, we see beer makers. Or, so many things are owned internationally. And, and if there's a global overcapacity, uh, and, and if, for example, U.S. Steel is going to keep closing plants here domestically, um, if it would be a stronger company combined with, with Nippon, would you ever endorse the deal, David? Would, would the steelworkers ever give a thumbs up to it with the right guarantees? The problem is, is the transaction itself, Nippon Steel won't be a signatory to the labor agreement. They've structured it in which uh, a subsidiary of, of Nippon Steel based here in the U.S., which is really just a shell company, uh, is a signatory to the labor agreement. Uh, Nippon has no intentions of actually being the owner. And, you know, there's real issues for us that won't be public uh, reporting on their finances, which um, a significant portion of our labor agreement uh, involves our profit sharing. Of course, we need to be able to verify what that means. And likewise, we've got restrictions on their upstreaming ability in order to, you know, take money out of the company, profits out of the company, transfer them somewhere else and put huge amount of debts on the company going forward. So those are real issues. And the way the, the transaction is uh, structured, uh, it doesn't work for us in any meaning.
It's not a, but it's not a Cepheus thing. It's it's more a, uh, an economic uh, concerns as far well, as I your, think it's a, I think it's a combination of both. You do, you know, not only uh, one of the things that concern us is there are other multinational companies that we've done deals with. But before the transaction, they've reached out to us, they've made concessions, they've talked to us about uh, what our needs are and what our concerns and our guarantees need to be. In this case, Nippon never never reached out to us, never talked to us. U.S. Steel refused to give us any information. So, in, you know, all of a sudden on December 18th, Nippon is, is uh, announcing that they're going to be um, the owner of the U.S. Steel facilities, and it's just not factual.